Hello everyone, I uh, hope you're having a wonderful HashiConf Europe so far. Uh, thanks for checking out our talk. Uh, we're talk going to talk about uh, the future of Vagrant, what's coming up in 2021 and beyond. Uh, I'm Sophia, I'm an engineer uh, on the Vagrant team. I'm here with my colleague Chris, who is the engineering lead. Um, so I'll leave it to you, Chris. Great, thanks. Uh, so before we get started, I want to have a quick look just at Vagrant's history. So Vagrant was the first HashiCorp product. It's so old, in fact, it actually predates the company. The first HashiCorp product was Vagrant-based. The Vagrant VMware plugin was the first product offered by HashiCorp all the way back in 2013. It helped provide the initial revenue to start building new tools. Given the age of Vagrant, it's not surprising that Vagrant has a very large community base. In many cases, Vagrant is a user's first introduction to HashiCorp and HashiCorp tools. It's used by new and experienced developers alike, and there's even tooling built on top of Vagrant itself. However, Vagrant provides many difficult maintenance challenges. And to start, let's take a look at how Vagrant is shipped. So Vagrant is a Ruby-based application, and this alone makes Vagrant different than other HashiCorp products. Whereas the majority of other teams ship a binary, we ship an entire package. So when we talk about shipping Vagrant, we're also talking about all of Vagrant's dependencies. So let's have a quick look at what they actually are and what's included within the Vagrant package. For Vagrant builds on POSIX style systems, we build the Ruby interpreter and curl along with installing Vagrant. This also means building all the required dependencies as well. On Windows, Ruby requires a POSIX compatibility layer. There, we are able to lean on MSYS2 and their Pac-Man port for, better, uh, for building our dependencies. We still build a custom Ruby and a custom curl but their dependencies are provided by MSYS2. And to further complicate things on Windows, our Windows builds ship with two different curl executables, an MSYS2-based build and a custom build with WinSSL support. So why distribute these packages if they're so difficult to maintain? Well, to start, it makes the installation process really easy. One file to install and Vagrant is ready to go. The installers also help to provide rep reproducibility. Given a version of Vagrant on a platform, we know exactly what is installed which helps us for debugging and finding issues with various things within Vagrant. Finally, the packages can be considered batteries included. Once installed, Vagrant can be in a usable state without any requirement for installing third-party tools. So while the packages are helpful in some situations, they can also cause us some issues. Installers are only available for a limited number of host platforms and distributions for Linux. AppImage has helped us to address this on the Linux side for a bit, but it also incurs a significant runtime penalty. And packaging installers like this also leads to pinned Ruby versions, and this can make it for difficult for users that are trying to run Vagrant outside of the installer packages that we provide. There's also other issues that we find with these heavy package installations. Tools that are provided with our package may conflict with other existing installations. Terminal users uh, also can have issues, especially on Windows, and this generally crops up where a custom terminal may be, may be being used by a user that's powered by SIGWIN or MSYS2. And finally, plugin installation can become difficult due to dependencies and the system not being able to properly resolve them. So while packaging is a big challenge that we deal with, the internals of Vagrant also provide their own set of challenges. Vagrant currently includes around 70 built-in plugins. And this means that the Vagrant team maintains a lot of plugins. These plugins include 38 different, different guest plugins, 12 host plugins, 10 providers, four different, or 10 provisioners, four providers, and three different communicators. Having all these built-in plugins is great that helps us ensure the interface for the plugins is robust and functional. However, once included in the core, these plugins are assumed to be fully supported. And that means that we spend a lot of time maintaining plugins that may not see much actual usage. While having built-in plugins helps us maintain the plugin interface internally, it also introduces hardships on the maintenance of the plugins themselves. Since built-in plugins ship with Vagrant, any fix or update requires a full Vagrant release. And depending on the state of Vagrant's current development and what's in process, there may be a significant delay between updates getting merged and the availability of it in an actual release. These types of delays don't impact non-built-in plugins as they have no hard requirement on Vagrant's release cadence. There's also some architectural constraints at play as well. 
Some features often requested are either not possible or require difficult workarounds. Some of these include GUI interfaces for interacting with guests, remote system support for hosts for Vagrant guests, as well as just sharing Vagrant projects themselves. Vagrant is not architecturally well positioned to solve these new concerns in its current state. And that's not surprising. Vagrant was designed 10 years ago to be a single user CLI tool. And since then, a lot of technology has changed. Vagrant is an important tool for managing VMs, but it should also be able to meet the evolving needs of its users. And given the uniqueness of Vagrant's implementation within HashiCorp, it leaves us unable to utilize common and useful HashiCorp libraries that have been developed for other products. So given all of these concerns that we have and challenges that we face on the Vagrant team, we asked ourselves this question, how do we maintain Vagrant for the next 10 years? Uh, so we have a couple pieces to uh, a solution to, to solve this issue. Uh, one piece of the solution is to externalize plugins. So Chris mentioned that we have 70 plugins. Uh, what this externalization of them means is uh, pull them out of being a built-in plugin um, into their own project that is still installable uh, using a Vagrant plugin install command. So our goal here really is to uh, limit uh, maintenance work that is not uh, very impactful uh, that we do as, as developers. And uh, that way we can we free up our time uh, so that we can work on more impactful uh, core uh, features of Vagrant. Part of this process is also to enable the community. So doing stuff like focusing on uh, making docs that are more clear about how to develop a plugin and how to maintain it. And the other ultimate goal of this project uh, is to limit gatekeeping uh, so that the Vagrant team isn't like stopping a pull request from getting merged or from plugins uh, getting released and then used out in the wild. So the next change that's coming is a switch over to Golang. So Vagrant is a Ruby project. Um, so this represents a, a big change uh, in how the project uh, is going to go. What we plan to gain from this is really uh, being more tied into the HashiCorp ecosystem that will make maintenance uh, easier, but also uh, this restructuring of the Vagrant architecture will allow us to build more features that will help solve modern problems uh, in uh, virtual machine-based workflows. So one of our big uh, concerns and one of the things that we plan to address in this move is maintaining backwards compatibility with both Vagrant files and Vagrant plugins. So uh, Ruby-based Vagrant plugins will continue to work um, for, for a long time. So we're not gonna get into too much of the engineering detail here, uh, but we have a little diagram showing how we're going to do this backwards compatibility. So basically what's happening is we have this Vagrant core um, written in Go, which we are gonna call Vagrant Agogo here. Uh, we have this Vagrant shim, which uh, translates information between Vagrant Agogo and uh, our legacy Vagrant, which will have the Ruby runtime. So using this kind of setup, we can continue to do stuff like understand Vagrant files um, and also run Ruby-based Vagrant plugins. So uh, a little bit about this new architecture. This goes hand in hand with the move over to Go. Um, with this move, we also plan to address some of like the plugin externalization uh, issues. Um, so doing stuff like uh, maintaining a, a stricter uh, component interface uh, will be something that we'll be able to do uh, in this new architecture. Next, this new architecture will allow us to uh, actually implement some, some changes that weren't possible really or really hardly fought for uh, in uh, Vagrant uh, as it is today. So doing things like managing privilege escalations um, for security-minded folks or doing stuff like remote execution for solving issues around VMs in the cloud. And it'll also allow us to move to a Vagrant HCL file. Um, so writing your Vagrant files uh, in HCL, similar to as you can do in, in most of the other, or all other HashiCorp products. So um, let's take a look at this a little bit in, in action. So uh, I'm in my Vagrant project here, and we can actually go uh, build a Vagrant executable. So let's take a look. Uh, there it is. Uh, it's Vagrant. So uh, let's go ahead and ask Vagrant uh, what kind of commands it has for us. And we'll give it a second, and we see it actually has all of the commands that uh, exist in Vagrant today. So um, it looks a little bit different, but all the functionality is still there. 
So let's run a Vagrant status now, um, and we'll get some verbose output so we can see what's going on under the hood a little bit. So we see a lot of Go logs, and at the end, we have a pretty familiar message about what is happening. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see that there's all of these Ruby plugins that are getting loaded. There's some Go plugins that are getting loaded. Uh, and then there's uh, some more actions that are happening. But at the end, we have this Vagrant status that is actually running uh, in the Ruby runtime. So let's go actually do something useful. We have this uh, Vagrant file here. Um, it doesn't do anything very exciting. It just can bring up a, a box. So let's go ahead and bring up a box. So in this command, we have uh, Vagrant being run from Go. Um, the up command is, again, being uh, provided through a Ruby plugin. So this is all getting executed uh, in like the Vagrant implementation of Ruby. And all of this output is coming from there, too. So if we wait a second, uh, we'll have a machine up. Fortunately, Vagrant or GoGo hasn't solved the issue of waiting for machines to start up. All right, cool. So uh, let's do like a Vagrant status to see if uh, we have this machine, just to confirm. And again, this is being run uh, in the Ruby side. Uh, so uh, we see that we have a beautiful uh, virtual box running. Um, so let's move on to running some Go plugin. So I have this plugin called My Plugin. It's a very exciting name. It does some very exciting stuff. For example, um, doing things, being interactive, and showing info. So uh, let's go ahead uh, and run the info command. So this is. Uh, Again, a, a Go plugin that, that is being run here. And this will just output uh, some information about the project. Um, so we see that we have the uh, same machine that comes out in status. So everything is consistent in here. Uh, so that was pretty much everything that is, is interesting here. Everything uh, is working pretty much the same as it did in an old Vagrant. Um, so we can go ahead and clean up our environment. Uh, we'll do a destroy. Um, again, Ruby plugin. So all of this is coming from Ruby. You can still interact uh, with the console in the same way. Um, and we destroyed the machine. And let's do a Vagrant status one more time, uh, just for good measure, to make sure that our, our box, our, our virtual machine, has come down. Cool. And it's down. The main takeaways from that de demo, uh, we have a Vagrant CLI that is written in Golang. Um, Core Vagrant is, is written in Golang here, there, or parts of it. Um, we still have Ruby plugins that uh, can be used. Um, and we have new Vagrant plugins that can be written uh, in Golang. Um, but most importantly, everything still works the way it should. And as an end user, you shouldn't really be uh, seeing any difference in how you interact with Vagrant. So um, now the exciting part, when do we get to play with these new fun toys? Um, so right now we're on Vagrant 2.2, uh, 2.2x, and through the two series, we will continue to be shipping Ruby uh, with our Vagrant installers. Um, so in this series, we're going to be porting uh, the rest of the core of Ruby, uh, core of Vagrant into Go. Um, we'll be doing this plugin externalization piece, um, and that includes doing stuff like uh, deprecating and, and porting plugins. Um, by the time we get to three series, we're going to stop uh, shipping uh, Ruby with our packages, and we'll just be shipping pretty much uh, Go binaries. Um, for uh, plugins that are still Ruby, um, we'll still be able to support those, but it'll be more of like a bring your own Ruby situation. So in a slightly adjacent topic, um, the VMware plugin, uh, we are open sourcing. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, it's going to be up on GitHub at HashiCorp slash Vagrant VMware Desktop. And similarly, Vagrant Share uh, also getting open sourced, and it'll be at HashiCorp slash Vagrant Share. So long term, um, what we really want to do here is be able to address uh, modern issues with virtual machine-based uh, workflows uh, 
using Vagrant. And this includes uh, integration uh, with HashiCorp tools. Um, and also uh, really uh, want to emphasize we have a continued commitment to the community. So we hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the future of Vagrant. Please watch the HashiCorp blog for more detailed information that was covered here, including about our timeline and the open sourcing of the plugins. Thanks very much for coming. Enjoy the rest of HashiConf EU.